Hello, everyone. Uh, Isaiah Henkel here with Cheeky Scientist, along with Asia Isbel and Kathy Sabara. So thank you, Asia and Kathy, for joining us today. Appreciate it. And uh, thank all of you who are watching this, either live or who will be watching it later. Um, today, we wanted to talk about uh, career options for PhDs, and specifically how you should base your decisions in terms of the career track in industry um, that you that you end up going into. Uh, so so first of all, a lot of PhDs, they they think there's really two options for them. There's academic career tracks and then there's non-academic career tracks like this black box, which is why so many PhDs don't know where to start um, in, in terms of transitioning into industry. And so our, our first goal here is to show you that there are a lot of options for you in terms of industry jobs. We're, we're going to talk about some of those options. And then we want to talk about how you can start to decide which of those options is right for you. Um, so, so, so Kathy, Asia, there's, there's really five tracks. And as you know, we recently put out a PhD career map, which anybody watching this can get just by messaging us on our fan page. If you go into Facebook Messenger and message us just the word map by itself, we'll actually deliver that career map to you. Um, but there's five career tracks, tracks that we've been talking a lot about this week. Um, one is the research and development track. This is one that we all know a lot about. Uh, you know, anything from an application scientist position, R&D scientist, right, research scientist, research engineer, quality assurance, and so forth. This is kind of the bread and butter track for a lot of PhDs, especially STEM PhDs. So Kathy, maybe I can ask you about, you know, which PhDs are, are we seeing moving into these roles a lot? What are some of the skills that they have? Um, and, and what are, maybe you could talk about a couple of those kind of uh, subtracks, whether it's application scientist and R&D scientist and what the differences are. Yeah, so obviously this track is the most common amongst PhDs. Um, these tend to be the PhDs who still enjoy doing um, bench research. Um, they still want to be doing a lot of the application side of science. And um, they're just interested in moving from academia into an interesting position. Um, so really all of the skills that you're using during your PhD are directly applicable to an industry R&D position. Um, but of course, you really want to highlight more of the transferable skills. So R&D in industry, you really want to play up um, how you are a team player. How, if you've done any collaborations with other labs, that will be um, a lot more important because in R&D in industry, it's a lot more of a team thing than of an autonomous thing that you see a lot in academia. Mm. Yeah, and I think for for R and D roles, again, even even though you might think it's a classical role for a PhD, you're going to be at the bench, like Kathy said. A lot of those skills, like client facing skills, uh, you know, team relationship building skills, are crucial to do. Um, I'm going to go actually just read off the list here. So there is application, uh, uh, excuse me, research and development. There's a R and D scientist, uh, technical mm -hmm. assessment and alliance manager. You maybe haven't heard that title before. R and D project manager, quality assurance or quality control manager. Uh, health economics and outcome research uh, associate. So a lot of different titles you probably haven't heard, and that's just in, in one of these large career tracks. Another one, obviously, that we see a lot of PhDs going into is sales and marketing, right? So this could include market research analyst, technical sales specialist, product manager, capital equipment specialist, marketing communication specialist. Asia, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of you know, the PhDs we see transitioning into these roles mm -hmm. and, and what are some of the different skill sets that they're leveraging for these roles. Yeah. So first I might just mention that um, oftentimes this isn't a track that PhDs automatically think that they can do. Um, I can tell you from my experience, that's the, that's the route that I took. I went into the sales and marketing route. I still loved science. I just didn't want to be at the bench anymore. Um, and in order to be successful in those tracks, your communication skills have to be exactly on point and you have to be able to tell a story about a product and a story about the science that will make sense to customers in the end. So you can take that sort of technical knowledge about the science, but you have to flip that so that people understand what the product benefits are. So um, storytelling and communication is an important aspect of that. And of course, building knowledge about the marketplace, which can be a really fun facet for PhDs to consider, maybe something you've never you know, sort of done before. Um, but it absolutely is a great career track for PhDs. I've seen a lot of PhDs become very successful simply because they can translate that scientific knowledge into something that the marketplace wants and understands. 
Perfect. Uh, another big career track is what we call information aggregation and patents. And this actually includes a lot of things. And it goes into kind of three sub-career tracks, intellectual property, writing and editing, information and data management. And so information and data management, you know, this is a really hot track, especially for those uh, PhDs who go into uh, data science, right? So data scientist is one of the, 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 the ending job titles on that track. Uh, healthcare informatics technologists, business intelligence analysts, uh, operations research analysts, all on that track. Um, intellectual property, right? This can include an IP lawyer, patent agent or scientific consultant, uh, tech transfer officer, patent examiner, lots of options. And then, of course, for the writing and editing track, it includes a scientific writer or technical editor, scientific journalism and publishing, or a medical writer. So, Kathy, maybe you could just talk briefly about a lot of the you know PhDs that you see moving into these tracks, especially in terms of the the medical writing. Uh, maybe if they're interested in IP or patents, which kind of PhDs are interested in this track, and what skills uh, can they leverage to get into them? <clears throat> Yeah, so a lot of the times we see PhDs going into these tracks who um, maybe their most favorite part of doing their PhD was writing the papers or reading papers and um, discussing papers at journal clubs. So they liked learning about what was hot in science and keeping up to date with the science um, more than actually, let's say, doing the science itself. So they had these uh, written communication skills that they somehow wanted to leverage and stay up to date with everything that's occurring, um, mm -hmm. whether it's science or technology side of things. Um, it's a bit of a misnomer that this field is more suited towards introverts, uh, because you still will have to work with other people. You're, you still have a management team. You still have colleagues that you'll be speaking to. Um, so it is a lot of, um, I guess, work on your own in terms of if you're a medical writer or an editor, you're going to be reading a lot. Um, patent mm -hmm. agents, they'll be reading a lot and they'll have to be putting together papers, but you'll still have to present that work to others. Um, so there's still like a team component that you'll have to keep in mind. But of course, this is where people with written communication skills will definitely excel. Perfect. And we do have lots of other career tracks. I'm just the, the, the two larger tracks that we aren't gonna have time to go into here fully, which is why you'll definitely wanna get our career map. So again, just message us on Facebook, the word MAP, M-A-P, and we'll send you this career map. But the two uh, bigger tracks are clinical and medical affairs, and then business finance and policy, which itself goes into three smaller tracks, financial services, business and strategy, research policy, funding and government. So lots of career tracks there. I, I, will, I do wanna end by asking uh, Asia to tell us a little bit about the clinical and medical affairs track. This track, there's a lot of options, uh, epidemiologist, uh, clinical trials project manager, regulatory affairs, medical affairs, medical science liaison, clinical research associate, clinical data manager. We see all of these fields being very hot now, especially regulatory affairs, medical affairs, mm -hmm. medical science liaison. Can you tell us a little bit about the PhDs we, you see moving into those tracks? Yeah, so I'll speak especially to medical affairs and medical science liaisons. They're an extremely important arm of the business. They interact a lot with physicians. And so um, PhDs have almost instant credibility because of the fact that they have a PhD and they're speaking with physicians and physicians like to speak with someone that they know can speak the science and who can ask and, and answer great questions about the science. Um, so an MSL or a medical science liaison role is really well suited for PhDs. And as a matter of fact, most companies will want you to have a PhD in order to get those types of roles. Um, they want what they call a terminal degree, so a PhD or a PharmD. So it's almost automatically that if you have um, your PhD, you can kind of consider that role. It is what we consider client facing, meaning you're interacting directly with customers. And so you have to be able to build relationships. That is absolutely key to this type of role. And you have to be able to address very specific questions. Um, it's not a sales role. So salespeople and medical science liaison roles are completely different. They're in completely different functions of the company. But more and more, we're seeing that the marketplace is valuing a medical science liaison role because of their ability to speak about science. Um, so PhDs are really well suited for that type of role. Perfect. Yeah. And, and again, lots of different options. Our goal here is to show you that there are a lot more options than probably you are uh, have considered for yourself as a PhD, no matter what your PhD background is. And then, of course, when it comes to making a decision on what 
uh, paths to go down. Um, there are some critical decisions uh, that you need to consider, some critical um, points in terms of your skills and which transferable skills you have and how to leverage them. So hopefully this helped you. Again, you can message us on Facebook, the word map to get our career map. Um, of course, our, our enrollment into the association is open this week. It closes in what, a little, a little over 15 hours or so. Yeah. 15 hours so, here. <laughs> wait, 15. No, wait. It closes yeah. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Um, so about My goodness. Friday hours. at 1159 <laughs> Eastern. How about that? 1159 Perfect. PM Eastern on Friday. All right, perfect. So if you haven't checked out the association yet, make sure you go to our, our fan page, our, our homepage there uh, on Facebook and, and check it out. And we will see you all uh, next week for another another interview. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.